Hello and welcome to the Author Minute with your host, me, Nate Portman. And we have a very special guest on the show today, Christian author Gina Willis from Boaz, Alabama. Hey, hey Gina, how are you? Hey, Nate, I'm fine. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm excited to have you on the show. Gina Willis says she's never dreamed of becoming a writer, but she does love to exhort and encourage others. Yet at times, she finds it awkward most times when she tries to speak in front of a crowd. In writing, she feels that she can just give it as Father God gives it to her. She said she realizes she was a writer when Father God spoke to her heart one day while walking the track. As tears streamed down her face, she says, he spoke to my heart. You're a writer. You know, that is that is just amazing, Gina. So you, you do your, you get inspiration while you're walking the track there, huh? Yes. Well, actually, Nate, that's um, a long story, but I actually started walking the track when um, God, God spoke to me just uh, the importance that I dedicated uh, time, a devotion time, not just a few minutes here and there, but a dedicated time to to spend just quiet with him. And also, I have been dealing with weight issues most of my life. So um, I began to walk to try to be obedient, to, to take better care of myself, to make, take better care of my temple. And um, that's what I started doing. And so I work, worked and I started walking. At first, I could barely walk at all, and not even a mile, I would say. But as time progressed, and I continued to walk and seek the Lord, I would just talk to him like I'm talking to you, but and I, it was quiet enough I could listen and hear his voice. And I just really began to treasure those times on the track. So I made it a point to put that first. And that's kind of how it all began. And then I wanted to share that inspiration with others. As they saw the weight drop, they would ask me about it. And so I would just talk to them for what God spoke to my heart. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Who is Gina Willis? Well, that's actually been the biggest part of this journey. It will sound strange, but at about when when this started, this was actually about four years ago. This journey began, and um, like I said in my bio, I'm uh, married. We have no children. I've done several things as far as uh, ministry for the Lord. I've seen taught Sunday school, but there came a time a few years ago when I knew there was something more I was supposed to be doing. And um, I had been fit into different roles. Sometimes, you know, you can just do things you've always done because that's what's comfortable. And so I began this journey of finding out who is Dina Willis, really? Who am I? What am I supposed to be doing other than, you know, just the normal everyday what I always do? And during my walk, this has been, I guess, one of the biggest things, not I guess, I know, but one of the biggest things God has spoken to my heart. First and foremost, I'm a daughter of the King. I'm a daughter of the Most High. And out of that, then I find, out of my relationship with Him, I find the strength to do other things. But first and foremost, my relationship with Him has to be top priority above being a wife, above being an employee, above being even a minister at church or wherever we may be. My first my first priority is that I'm the daughter of most high. And so that's where and I began to just revel in the love of God, the forgiveness of God, and seek his direction on what did he really want me to do with the rest of my life. And my heart has always been for the downcast for the outcast, because I was once one. Um, I didn't really share in the book uh, this part of my story, not a lot, because it's just small excerpts, but God delivered me 20 years ago from a a lifetime, uh, lifetime it seems, but but for several years, I was highly addicted to alcohol, uh, amongst other drugs that I did partake in, but I was um, let out drunk, I'll just say, and there was a lot of sin, a lot of uh, addiction to other things, a lot of um, turmoil that came out of that lifestyle. Now, keep in mind that I had accepted the Lord Jesus as my Savior when I was a little bitty girl. And um, just made some wrong choices. 
and uh, got into the wrong life. And for several years, I was far, far away from him. Um, when I came back to God, this is a whole other story, but my whole purpose now that God delivered me from that lifestyle 20 years ago, my whole purpose now is to share God's love and hope with whomever I can, however I can, um, to never give up, to never give up, to never think you're less than just because you came maybe from a different background from someone else. You know, I didn't grow up. I didn't go to college. I didn't do a lot of the things other people do, but that's, that's the amazing thing about Father God. That it doesn't matter. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And that's what this book is all about. It's uh, just me sharing what God shares with me, with me every day as I speak to him and spend time with him and listen to him. He gives me hope to keep going. He gives me hope to try something new. And that's what I want other people to see, no matter who they are whether they're homeless out in the street or whether they're someone that's really been successful as far as this world goes, but is still empty in their hearts that doesn't know the Lord. That's my, that's my whole purpose is to share hope. Well, that's really awesome. So tell me a little bit about this book. You know, what made you want to write a devotional? I mean, you say you were walking in the track, and, you know, and which is awesome. Uh, what you know? What was that defining moment when you realized, you know, wow, I guess I'm writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's kind of where my husband and you came in. God had given me a uh, defining moment, and I can take you to the place, the curve in the track where I was walking, and I was just praying and spending time with the Lord, and I guess wondering what what I was supposed to do because I never started sharing these posts on Facebook to write a book. I just started sharing to encourage people. That was the whole point. You know, people say a lot of Facebook, you know, can be used for bad and it can, but you can also use it for good. And that's all I was doing was just sharing my heart to encourage people. Well, one day as I was walking around the curve, tears just started streaming down my face, not, you know, just a little bit, I was just crying and weeping. And God spoke to my heart, just these words, you're a writer. And I knew, I didn't know how, I didn't know when, you know when, but I knew that was him speaking to me. And I thought, and this is going to sound weird, but I thought, well, that's crazy. And then immediately I'm talking to the Lord, asking him to forgive me because I'm like, Lord, I didn't mean you were crazy. But <laughs> that's just a thought that came to my mind. And I just want to be real with people. And he just speaks to me in a way that I can understand. That a lot of times we um, we look for a, a, I don't know, something just totally uh, elaborate, something totally out of the ordinary. When sometimes it's just, and it can be that God speaking that way, but sometimes it's just this still, small voice, just doing what you're supposed to be doing, that he'll speak a word to you. And that's what he did that day. Well, you know, I continued to post. I didn't know exactly, you know, how that was going to come about. You know, it just seemed so far-fetched to me. Uh, but then one day, my husband, you know, he had spoke to me the same thing. You need to you need to do something with it. And then people started commenting on Facebook. You know, I have a lady that, matter of fact, one, at one point she was my worship leader. And she something about a book and I forgot about this lady I shouldn't have but Miss Rena um, Morgan she was a Sunday school teacher a very precious impact in my life as a young teenager before I really got away from the Lord uh, for all those years and she um, she actually sent me something via, via Facebook one day that she had actually had a vision of sorts of seeing me do something. She didn't know exactly what, but that it would impact a lot of people. Well, she didn't know what all was going on in my heart, but I knew. So God has used several um, different people before I actually even totally gave into the idea to speak that into my life, to confirm that this was his will. 
And um, actually, my husband, Jerry, is the one that first contacted you, you know, about the book, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. And then it kind of <laughs> all just came from there. And it's been a long process, I know, but just different reasons, financial reasons. And then, um, as a matter of fact, during the middle of this time, after some of the book, or some of it was written, and um, this is in the book, just in a brief form, though, you know, I did have hepatitis C. I'm healed from that, praise God. But during the middle of the writing of the book, I guess you would say, uh, I underwent treatment for that. And God did heal me. And I had a surgery during this time. And about halfway during the book, um, I had an awful time with my feet for about two years. And that's another story of healing that I, I have to tell later. But it's been a long process. But um, that's just, that's how I came to know. He spoke to my heart that day at the track and then has just, ever since then, sent people into my life, sent different words to confirm what I was supposed to do. That's amazing. You know, sometimes we we get a call on our life. God will put a call upon us, and sometimes sometimes He doesn't make that call so plain. You know, we you, it's, you know it's like you say, uh, you knew there was something there. You knew you needed to do something, uh, and but it was that day at the track where God revealed it to you. Said, "Hey, yeah. this is it." Yeah. Well, it's yeah. it's obvious that you're a woman of great faith. Working with you on this book has been a journey for me as well. You even did the artwork for the book. You you had a vision uh, for how the cover should be. So tell us a little bit about that. Actually, the Bible pictured there is the Bible that I use every day. That's the Bible that I read out of. And uh, My husband actually gave me that Bible a few years ago. The reason I chose the Bible, the Bible is uh, my hope. I mean, my life, the Word of God. Um, I can remember when um, I was out in addiction and far away from God, but I still, God would bring his word to my heart. I mean, I would be somewhere drinking, and this is going to sound crazy, but it's the truth. He would um, bring verses to my heart, and it would quicken my heart, and I knew I had to repent and get right with the Lord. I can remember a time when I was so far gone uh, in alcohol, that I was literally, I would have lost my mind, except not for the grace of God. And I remembered the scripture, Second uh, Timothy 1, 7, that says, For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so the importance of the Word of God in my life, um, other than accepting Jesus as my Savior and giving my heart to Him, the importance of the Word in keeping us amidst all kinds of trials, all kinds of temptations. Um, my mama taught me the word, and she said, if you, if you can't speak nothing else, you speak the name of Jesus and get in his word. And that's what I've done, and that's what's kept me all these years. So that's why I wanted to use the Bible. And um, the shoes, those are the shoes that um, I just recently quit walking in because they just got, they had gotten so uh, old and tattered. But those are the shoes that I walked in every day, and it just it reminded me of uh, when I look at them and I see this comes to my mind of the day, and I see uh, the holes in them, and I see that the soles of them are, you know, worn out and they're missing pieces actually now. But you know, sometimes that's how our lives are. Sometimes you know we may look at a person and we may think, you know, well oh, they're kind of scarred up and they're kind of you know a little bit bruised or bloody. But they're still here, you know, and that's kind of the way with my shoes and my Bible. Those two things particularly were things I used in seeking God, doing his will, hitting the track every day, and spending time with him every day. But the shoes are just a symbol to me of hard work and dedication, what it takes to really live a victorious life. Not only physically, because I did have some weight to lose. I'm working on that again. I've lost 44 pounds again. Probably yes, not. you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know but, when we're but, there. When we're there at church on Sunday, of course, I'm all. I'm. I never know when I'm going to get to be there or not. But anymore. But you know, the, a couple Sundays ago when I was here in town, I looked over and I, I thought, wow. <laughs> and well, it's like that, you got a husband yeah. that I know is proud of you. <laughs> Well, that's the whole, when I started this journey before, you know, God speaks to us and we're saved, we're Christians, but we all have things 
areas of our lives that we need to work on, you know, from time to time. And uh, one area of my life after God delivered me from the drug to alcohol addiction when I almost died. Another area has been food. Uh, but it's just the rest of the flesh. Any way the enemy can try to come in and hinder us, that's what he's going to try to do. So, and this is just for me. I'm not saying everybody that's overweight is out of control. I'm not saying that at all, by no means. Some people have physical limitations. Some people take medicine that causes them to gain weight. But that was not my issue. My issue was, and I'm just going to be honest and blunt like I do on Facebook, like I did in my book. I'm just going to be real. Food for me has been a problem. It's been sin at times from overeating, from eating the wrong food. So a lot of the things that I relate to um, physically, God then shows me a spiritual side of it. Or, you know, something spiritual, he'll show me an idea or a, an example in the natural. And so I go back and forth with the physical. And when I do what I know to do, I don't. I don't have the issues with being out of control in my flesh. When I'm in my word and when I'm walking, for me, walking is a definite must. Then everything else kind of comes into play. I like it. Well, this is really awesome getting to be able to speak with you today, Gina. And you know what is a, what I find intriguing about you is as talented as you are, you could take the talent that God has given you, which is obviously a God-given gift. You know, you could take oh, that, right. you know, now that you have discovered who you are, what it, what your life's purpose is in this writing, you could take this and you could go out into the world and you could do your writing. You could try to write on secular topics. I mean, you could probably go out there and, and really do something extraordinary with your writing yeah. in a secular world, but you have decided that's not what you want to do. You are using your talent for God and to grow the kingdom, yeah. and that is what is amazing. And I just pray that people will stand by you, they will support you, they will pray for you, that they will be there to help you uh, through through even through your writing. Pray that God would uh, give you a vision for future writings, uh, for yeah. future stories that you want to write. And you know, just talking to you, I mean, you're getting me all excited. I think we're about to have church. We need to go walk the track. I'm gonna go walk with you. <laughs> Well, come on. Oh, since you said that, and no, you can come walk with me sometimes if you want to, but I, and I probably need to address this because I have had several people over the years, like I say, there was about a two, a two year period there that I couldn't walk. And I'll elaborate a little bit. I had a um, doctor to tell me, and I was going regularly to the foot doctor at this time because um, I had worked up to walking three miles a day. I was down 80 pounds. I was almost, you know, to where I felt like. Well, I was walking in obedience to where I felt like to the Lord. But I was almost to what I thought my goal weight. I wanted to be, you know, not that it's, the goal weight is obedience to the Lord and wherever he gets you to that time. Of course, we want to look good, too. There's no need to lie. We do. We should take pride in at least, you know, taking care of ourselves. But uh, there was about a two-year period there that I couldn't walk. Um, I was taking medicine for pain, neuropathy, spurs in both fields, um, plantar fasciitis. And um, so, like I said, for about two years, I wasn't walking. I was doing all I could do to work every day. And um, God led me through some different things. I ended up having to go to the doctor and getting some medicine for the pain in my feet to be able to work, taking shots in my feet. And one thing that led to... Uh, this bit of self-respiration was when they changed the medicine they'd give me, and I felt like maybe that I was in a a hole. Black is all I can describe it, a black hole. Like I did back before God ever delivered me from alcohol and drug addiction. It was almost a hopeless state. And so I got down, and that was only after about a week of taking that medicine. And so I said, okay, Lord, I don't know what, what we're going to do, but I can't do this. I'm not doing this anymore. So I threw those down the I flushed them and didn't take any any more of those. And my pastor at the time, uh, this is another series of events that God brought healing to me. My pastor at the time had told me about a book, uh, The Meal That Heals. And in that book, uh, he talked about, Jensen Franklin is the author of that book, and he talked about uh, taking communion every day. And so um, 
I didn't really understand it all, but I felt God prompted me as my pastor had, uh, you know, brought me the book, told me about the book, and I felt prompted to do that. Same thing, just pray and, and do communion every day. Well, at the same time, a former guy that I, a Christian brother that I worked with at the time, he brings me some little communion to, you know, the little kind that has the juice and the bread, the wafer. Yeah. And this disposable one, he brings them to me. Well, I don't even think, I mean, I had not mentioned all this to him. He didn't know what all was going on. But God prompted him to bring those to me. And so after I did that for a month, just me at home, I would pray and I would take the communion and I would pray for my healing. Well, God healed my feet. I no longer take, uh, have to go get shot and all that for my feet, for the pain in my feet. I'm able to do what God's called me to do again. So that in itself is amazing. That was about two years into the book. Well, then far into what I didn't know was going to be a book then. And then so it's just been, like I said, I gained my way back and just different things happened. Well, then around the first of this year, I just really began to seek the Lord again and to get dedicated again to fulfilling the purpose. And I just started walking again. And now he's uh, enabled me to Walk up, I walk four miles a day now, and that's, um, I said all that to say this. A lot of people have asked me about walking the track with me, coming to walk with me. And it sounds kind of mean, I guess, when I don't just invite them to come. But I've learned something over the last few years, especially. You have to guard your time with God. If you're going to have any um, quality time along with the Father, <laughs> You have to guard it. And That's good. what may seem mean, what may because I, I, I've got to the point where I say, well, I'll try to walk an extra mile with you, but i got to have my time. Because it's not just getting out there walking. I'm walking, I'm praying, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm lifting my hands and people probably think I'm crazy. But that's what I do. <laughs> I'm singing. I understand I'm that. out loud. I mean, they probably do, you know, which now I walk around our church parking lot and in our neighborhood, so it's probably not quite as uh, noticeable if I'm, you know, shouting or whatever. But that's this time I, I, I walk and I, I uh, recite scripture out loud, certain scriptures that mean, you know, uh, certain things to me when I have need of, something, you know, the Bible says the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So we have power when we speak out God's Word. Amen. You know, and that's what we have to do. And um, something that I've learned over the years, the Bible says in First Peter four twelve, to think it not strange when these fiery trials come upon you to test your faith. Well, that two-year period, I didn't know what in the world was going on, you know. And there's some things going on right now. I'm thinking, Lord, what in the world is going on? But I know what's going on. The enemy, of course, is going to try to come. He's going to try to come, you know, and stop us, just like he did Jesus, you know. If he tried to come and tempt Jesus, he's sure going to try to come and tempt me or try to get us to doubt. But God, you know, God is faithful. The Bible says in First Corinthians 10, 13, God is faithful to make a way of escape that we can bear it with every temptation. So that's why I, I walk by myself usually. I, I know other people think it's easier to walk with somebody, but I already have a walking partner. I was going to say, come so. on now. <laughs> <laughs> and see, I love, so, I love books like this. You, you never know. And see, this is just perfect, you know, especially you. I mean, a lot of people don't know, you know, and even people when your book comes out, they're not going to know everything about you. Some people may go to into a bookstore and pick up a copy of this book. They may just happen to yeah. walk past it and find it, and they don't even know you. They don't know right. about your life. They don't know about your story. Uh, and see, that's the thing that is so awesome about this, because you never know what someone is going through in their life. Right. And the thing right. about your book, I really believe, you know, even with just your, 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 your sweet spirit and being able to talk with you and knowing you personally and, and reading your writing, you have the capability, because of your obedience to God, and your daily devotion, and your time with him, do you realize that this book is going to touch so many lives for Jesus? That is, that's it. That's my whole prayer. If, if someone, if anyone, if one person can read a poem, a post, and not give up hope, 
you know, if one person can be encouraged, and my prayer is that many, many people will, you know, maybe they might not come to church, but maybe they'll look on Facebook or maybe they'll pick up a book and read something that gives them hope to continue on. You know, and a lot of times I don't post some things that God speaks to me because, you know, everything ain't all sunshine and roses all the time. It ain't. You know, just that's the way it is. We go through things. And uh, and sometimes we miss the mark, you know, as Christians even. Um, I, I don't want to be one of those people that people read their book and they say, oh, well, they're just all positive. I am. But I'm also real, too. Yeah, but I see, you've that. been through. I mean, you've been through enough well, of the negative. It's like, why would you drown yourself in that much more right. writing about it every day? I mean, it, right. I love it that you're so positive. I mean, I want people to know that, hey, yeah, life is hard sometimes, but God is faithful. There's, there's so much, like you said, there's so much negativity that we could focus on. We could look around probably in any of our lives. We've got lost loved ones. We've got financial hardships. We've got sickness. That we could, but God is faithful. It doesn't make, I mean, if nothing else, our trials should go to show. That, yeah, at one time what I thought was the end is only an opportunity for God to show himself strong in my life. That's right. Show off them battle scars. Because because that's that's really, when you get down to it now, that's really all it is. I mean, as long as we don't give up hope on God, as long as we don't quit, that's the whole reason I chose the title. Because after every post, I mean, that's my whole, I mean, that's my biggest thing is I just want people to know no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, you have a reason to keep on walking. That's right. You have a reason to get up and keep on. If you can't do nothing but put one foot in front of the other, I, I can remember in AA, I did go to AA years and years ago to try to, you know, find help there, and I'm not knocking anybody for doing that, you know, because actually, if the truth be known, they take biblical principles and try to use them, you know, and some people get success there. But one thing I remember about them uh, was saying, was well, you can't do nothing else because you're just, you know, so confused, you're so uh, worn out of whatever, trying to get started again after being in life of drugs or alcohol. It's just get up and do the normal everything to and everyday things in life. Get up, brush your teeth, come here. I've heard Teacher Jake say that. You know, there are times, even as Christians, that we go through things that are so horrific, we don't even feel like we can uh, do anything for the Lord much, or for ourselves, much less do anything great for God. But that's especially the time when you don't feel like it. You get up, you suit up, you get dressed, and you and you get in God's word, and you get some time with Him. No matter how I feel, God's word is true. And that's my whole life message. There's nothing else. if if I can share the nitty gritty stories of my life, and them say now, hey, who is this to? Because it still blows my mind even to think, you know, me write a book. I never would have thought. But then I think of that old country song, "Why Not Me?" Because nobody. You know, when it gets down to it, nobody's anybody except for the grace of God. We don't have anything. We don't even have our breath if God doesn't give it to us. So he's he's equal opportunity. If we will just do the next thing he's telling us to do, there's no limit. That's right. And and if I can, I want to, uh, I've actually got one of your devotion here in front of me that I'd like to read for the listeners, which is, it's just amazing because it's pretty much everything we've been talking about. But it says, dare to believe. Mm -hmm says, whosoever will dream, dare to take a chance, quit living their lives through happenstance. Whosoever believes God's word is true, nothing is impossible. It's up to you. Will you go on living as you always have, or will you trust him and take the chance? Will you surrender to the plans God has, or simply exist and forever be scared? Letting fear rule you instead of trusting God. Trust in the vision God has placed in your heart. He will guide you through it right from the start. Yet fight you must to realize your dreams. 
Don't fall prey to the enemy's schemes. Discouragement, fear, and security, too, are part of his plan to try and stop you. Don't let him win. Keep walking forward. Father God will guide you as you journey onward. All things are possible with Father God, you see. Just dare to believe. Why not me? That is amazing. Wow. That is, uh, uh, all right, y'all. Now, you all can see with this this devotion right here, I think we all need to go start walking that track where she's been going to. <laughs> <laughs> because evidently there is something over there that we're missing out on. <laughs> oh, wow. He's there. But he's right here, too. <laughs> he is. And that is amazing. That is just, uh, and, and you wrote that. And, and you've even... Uh, this you've even got a note on here. It says this was the first poem that you did after a surgery. And yes, yes. That that's just amazing because even in those moments, you know, so many people look at life and, and the negative and the the bad things that happen or, or mm-hmm. you know things that we go through. They some people that I know personally have such a negative outlook on everything that takes place. And mm-hmm. even and that's why I say that I love about you, Gina. Even in the midst of a a situation that was not so positive. I mean, you were going in for surgery, uh, but even in the midst of that, you come out with a song in your heart and you come out ready to give God praise. And that is just well, amazing. I've, I've learned, Nate, that, I, like I said, um, without him, I, I don't even have my breath. And I cling to him. I, I mean, in time, I wonder sometimes, you know, we would all hope to be um, dedicated and loyal to him every day of our lives, no matter. But sometimes for some of us, and I've been there, it takes desperate situations to keep us close to God. And I've been there a whole lot of times where I had to get flat on my face, you know, and him say, okay, okay, you want it your way, go ahead, you can have it. But I learned, especially during those desperate times, to run to him. And his love is just so rich and so fulfilling that it caught, the more I spend time with him, the more I want to spend time with him. There's just nothing like being in the presence of God, even just being quiet and and we're not saying anything. We're just walking, you know, walking along together, you know. It's, um, he's my hope. That, that's just it. He's my hope. And, um, uh, I wouldn't want to do life without it in any kind of way. So just to clarify, your book your book's not yet available, but it's coming out right before Christmas this year. Yes. yes. Awesome. Well, Gina, it has been so exciting being able to have you on the show today. You are absolutely a very exciting and passionate woman. And, and as I've said earlier, I pray for you. I pray much, much success for you and your book. Keep on walking. I pray that God uses your book and you to touch the lives of millions of people, not just here in Alabama, not just here in Boaz, not just here on Sand Mountain, but uh, and, and not even just in Alabama, but all around the country and all around the globe. Uh, and, and it's just, again, it's been great having you here today. And thank you so much, Nate, for the opportunity. Thank you for uh, being patient. It has been a long process, a long time coming, and I'm so computer illiterate. Y'all just don't know how Nate has uh, worked for me. But I so greatly appreciate it, and I thank you so much for being supportive and uh, giving us this opportunity to get the book out there. Absolutely. And if you guys would like to uh, connect with Gina, you can do so by contacting her on Facebook at Gina Willis. And just tell her, say, hey, I, I heard that interview of you on the Author Minute with Nate Fortner, and I'd love to be your friend. I'd love to get a little bit more of information about your book and see some of the, these fresh devotions that you're posting on your page. And if you would like to reserve a copy of your book, Keep On Walking by Gina Willis, you may do so by contacting whosoeverpress.com or by calling us here at the office at 256 706 Three three one five. Well, Gina, I know you still got something that you want to say to all those listening today, so let's hear it. Well, I'm just going to take a minute and encourage you to, uh, no matter where you are in life, and maybe maybe today you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about. Maybe you don't know what is she talking about. Keep on walking. Keep on walking with who? Father God has sent His Son Jesus here into this earth to make a way that you could be saved, that you could spend eternity in heaven. And not only that, that you could have a full, rich, good life here while you're here on this earth. 
if you don't know him today, I, I invite you. Uh, contact me, contact Nate, but you can right now, you can contact Kevin. I just simply pray into the Father and ask in Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to come into your heart. And accepting him as your Savior is just as simple as that. And then you'll be on the path. You'll be on the path to keep on walking with God. Amen. And that that pretty much just sums it all up right there. So everybody, thanks again for listening in today. You've heard it right here with Nate Fortner at the Author Minute. Our very special guest, Gina Willis. Thank you so much for being on the show today. And Thank you so much, Nate. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much, Gina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.